how this draft is supposed to come together. Otherwise, we might not be here for all that long for the second game. They can try to like, don't try to shit down the Rick first. They can try to shit down the TA. They can try to shit down the Mars. And then the Rick feels pressured to join the fights with only the Diffusal Blade, but the other cards are not armed. So, oh, happening? Okay. I, I thought Hiko would consider throwing the shards, but not really. So yeah, I, I think they can just try to focus on the TA. Oh wait, what is he doing, man? Just walking around, right? Yeah. Yeah, just walking around, just chill. I have a question, right? So if you, if Ricky gets shot and you drop shot uh, on one of the enemy heroes, and then Tusk snowballs past you, right? So let's say Tusk clicks like as I don't know a creep wave or a hero behind the smoke. Can you, as the hero inside the smoke screen, can you still click the snowball or not? I don't know, never seen that interaction, but it, it prevents the allies from targeting you on a spell. I don't know if right clicking your allies are con is considered as a target spell. Well, we don't get many games with Ricky, so hopefully we get to see that interaction happening. As now the game is underway, gonna be some, uh, some standard, oh not standard actually, 3 for 1 bounty rune trade. So invaders already off to a really good start here. This is, uh, yeah, not going to be that fun for them. On the bright, and it's also going to be interesting because FCR is the one playing Winter Wyvern in the off lane here. I've never actually seen this particular matchup of Winter Wyvern oh, off lane versus Ricky, so I have no idea how this is going to go. Um, I think Ricky can farm a lot on this lane. Very high base damage. Has a decent health region, base health re region as well. He can escape from the shards. It's hard to shut down the Riki here. Tiger has to be careful though. Tiger can definitely end up dead in the bottom lane if he's caught out of position. But that's primarily going to be on Hiko to try and provide that kind of space. Because like you say, MNZ pretty much can never be pressured as Blink Strike and Tricks of the Trade, which both of them kind of negate the advantage Winter Wyvern normally has in these kind of laning scenarios. Not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination for the White Dragons and Tiger. Yeah, there's no spells right now in FCR, so he's not going to die here, but he's going to get marinated a little bit. So once level 2 emerges, I'm pretty sure White Dragons are going to try and make a jump onto Tiger. Yeah, they got denied on the range of the creep, so... I take some time for them to hit level 2. They would hit it first on the invaders. Mid lane. We used to see this matchup a lot more often. Oh, they actually got the first. Oh no, this is the worst case scenario. They killed FCR and now Hiko's in danger as well. One more right click from both yep. heroes should be enough. MNZ gets the kill. All right, this has just become a nightmare. It's one thing to not get the kill onto Tiger. It's quite another to lose both of the heroes. Oh, all right. They got level two and instantly went to kill the Wyvern. That was easy. Oh. They denied to gather on the lane, so they got two first. Oh. Well, uh, I hope this lane goes well for y'all, White Dragons. HFN, buddy, need to farm like a demon on the side of the map. Does have some pretty decent CS right now. Unfortunately, they don't really have kill threat with Enchantress Morphling into Wind Ranger, Mars. All they can try and do is win the trade in the farm war overall. And down bottom, he goes in trouble again. Getting ran back by MNZ, but they do eventually decide to let him go. The first levels on Winter Wyvern are not great. Needs at least level 3 to become a, to become a threat. It's a long ass cooldown the first spell. It's actually crazy. Like this, that does need, there's a reason why whenever we see like these mid wyverns, they just like get as many points as fast as possible. 26 seconds is so long. Use it once each wave. My sprites are with us. Just supports fighting against each other in the top lane. Ranger Ranger? Okay. No, she should be fine. No way she dies here. 
If she dies, that's when Smash is just gonna start pinging you and be like, what are you doing? Mid lane, Chris Lock, oh my gosh. That was close. That Ooh. was close. Very, very close. Very, very close, but not able to get the kill. It does zone back Mr. Jeans a little bit to just refill this bottle, but he should be, for the most part, fine here. Unfortunately, this is now the point where we have two points up in refraction on the TA, so we can't really pressure the TA anymore. At least he can X TP base next time. But TA is just out farming the conquer right now. As expected. Not really much you can do about that situation. The one bright side for them on the side of White Dragons is that because Chris Luck is playing this TA, he's not playing a Mars, he's not playing a Storm, none of these playmaking style heroes. So they're not going to be anticipating as much direct team fight issues that they experienced in game one, which might make things a little bit easier for them overall in these engagements. Yeah, since my might go for like Dragon Lance, Blink Dagger just to get involved early using the Diffusal Blade on Ricky timing. But they are planning on a gank here. Two supports. That might work. Okay. X back. Blood Torrent, Blood Grenade to start things off to get rid of the Summer Fraction. And he is... Oh, no. No way. They came to kill TA without a sentry. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's oh, wait. Enchantress has a sentry. Boys. Enchantress has a sentry. What happened? Uh... Your? Your? I don't know. Um, and the dust. I... I do not know what just happened. Maybe the courier just delivered it? There's a career coming back base. Oh, yeah, it might be it. Oh, it no. might be it. Oh, it has no. to be it. Yeah. <sighs> that's that's tough, man. That's tough. You know, a lot of things happen in game one that could be really tilting. But this right here would be really tilting. All right, they're going to try again. This time they have all the tools. And this time it's going to work out. So Chris Luck will die. Invaders feeling kind enough to say, all right, boys, you, you guys kind of deserve this kill. We'll let it happen. And they're still chasing for more. They might want Tiger as well. To catch him underneath the tier one tower. It throws back a magic missile onto Yor. But we'll get caught right now by the Centaur Conqueror Stomp. But they don't have the damage here. Kunker stayed on the far side of the tier one. He went to get a bounty rune. So he can't provision the damage necessary to kill off this vengeful spirit. If he was here, it would probably be a kill. But he wants the runes. And HFN is fine top, playing alone against the Mars. There's a lot of denies as well. But what's the build here for the Morph? Is he going for like Vlad's? Is he going like more normal build? Hmm. You kind of need to... Build. I think you at least buy the Vlad's. He's going to need something tanky, right? Maybe like... Vlad's Manta BKB, something like this, just for some survivability options. But he definitely Vlad needs Manta BKB. Yeah, Kanda. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh. Rick but I think everybody sick. should just itemize for survivability here, because you're gonna have to survive against uh, this Ricky jumping you with Diffusal Shard at some point. They're gonna try to surprise the more flame. Oh, not like this. I feel like unless they bring three, even maybe even four heroes right now, this morphling should be fine. Should be a okay. No real danger of dying. And because I'm Chris Luck is playing TA instead of Storm, he so he should be fine. Yeah, Sisma is just farming. He knows that if he shows mid, everyone's gonna go there to gank him. There's some stacks on the triangle. The camp's blocked, but at least they got one. Hmm. They have vision there as well. Yeah, both supports are just playing around the mid area from 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 the both teams. That means Winter is farming quite a lot on the bottom side. There's a lot of CS for a Winter Winter Wyvern. Ever since they moved Tiger middle, 
He doesn't want to tell that there is a sentry there. Look. Oh no. Oh, he does. Now he reveals it. But the Jeans is here as well. They stop him with the Winter's Curse. Torrent will come out with the boat. Do they have the damage to actually kill MNZ here is the question. And the answer is no, at least not for now. He drops the smoke screen, blink strikes towards Tiger, and he is just A-OK, -okay, gets himself away from danger. Man, Ricky, what a frustrating hero, but White Dragon, yeah. recognizing that they just overall have a lack of burst damage. This issue has been reprised into game two, but they're gonna struggle to kill off a hero like the Ricky with how, how much high armor he has. And they wasted some of the torrent damage as well during the Winter's Curse. That was a hard kill to get. And close to the Dragonlance of the TA. The 10 minutes run is about to respawn. 30 seconds. Ports already there. I wonder if Ricky plans to go on the on this fight because I think he's bringing the Diffusal Blade. Right? Uh, not yet, not yet. Oh, it's not. It's not the only the neutral item. Okay. But White Dragon has smoked up again in middle. Mr. Jeans was smoked. Uh, they're gonna go for this Vengeful Spirit easy kill onto Tiger. He's gonna, dude. What a player, Tiger. <laughs> what a what a god, dude. Gets the D ward on the way out. That's the kind of support play that we need to be seeing. Just went for the ward. It's gonna be round two on Ricky, but he can just leave the lane. Isn't that obvious? I think so, right? But they can take the tower. It's it's okay too. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, are they going? Are they trying to kill HF fan? The other side? I don't think they can kill him before the diffuser blade comes out. So he should be fine for now. They're gonna go on top of him. He didn't get off the morph. <laughs> oh no. They will come in to kill off Yodomi at the very least. So, Vengeful Spirit should die here, but even this is taking a lot longer than they were hoping for. At the very least, they get the kill, it doesn't get denied off. But, ah, oh, dude, that was. Yeah, very that should not happen. Yeah, they didn't even drop smoke screen for that. That was just raw magic missile, and he didn't start shifting. They, they didn't got the trade on the tower, but still got the kill. Ooh, nice. That was Easy nice. He was able to do some little shenanigans with the eye shots, get himself out of danger. He used to play a lot of Tusk back when he was a post four. He played, he played offline last season. Feels like they want some to do something, but it's kind of complicated right now for the side of White Dragon. Because also, who do you go on to kill? Right? These heroes are not easy to bring down on the enemy lineup. Ricky, the Smars, this TA. The resource commitment to get any of them brought down is pretty extreme. Even the supports are not that simple to bring down, unless they, it's the Vengeful Spirit. Dora is putting a lot of damage out onto Sladen, yeah. but... Jackal Shot will put an end to that quite easily. I think they should bring the Winter Wyvern mid. And try to poke the tower with the uh, enchanter script. Uh, Winter Wyvern oh. might just be in a lot of danger here. Diffuser Blade has been revealed by MNZ, but Mr. Jeans is in. Winter's Curse will be there. They're gonna try for this move again. Last time out, it didn't work out. This time around, it looks like they do have the damage, but they don't have the reveal. Come on. No Not again. way, dude. Not again. Not again. But again. It happens again. We can forgive them this time because maybe it's like it's core heroes, you know? But. Yeah, man. FCR Game should have us. a dust. He should have one dust. Now oh, they're. Oh, they're just farming. I thought Sismayo was considering going top. He's. He almost has the. Desolator? Gonna be a carry. Why not, right? Looking at this game and being like, well, at some point, oh, they're actually not gonna be able to kill us. My dragon just. The only damage they have is Morphling, and Morphling is gonna take a really long time before he's ready to get involved. And even when he does get involved, he's at such major risk of just dying to the Ricky that whatever, man, let's just get overwhelming amounts of damage and then just run at them. What do we have to be afraid of? 
Nothing. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Because getting close to the blink dagger as well, that would give more play potential for white dragons. Um That's already blink dagger on Mars ready as well. Oh man. It's go time for invaders. The map is gonna be their oyster. They can go pretty much wherever the hell they want. Uh, they're still thinking about where to go though. It looks like Chris Lack is still comfortable just farming away. So is MNZ. Under no real pressure. Mid lane. Couple of heroes positioned in front of the tier 1 tower for White Dragon. So they're thinking about trying to bring this one down. Open up space for FCR to come in. And they drag back FCR here will they be able to keep him alive nice little shackle shot onto hiko there's the swap from yodomi but chris luck is very low he's falling lower and lower and he should die off here but it does take a while with open up space for smash to drop an arena right behind them as that's happening though hfn gets involved in the fray to bring down yodomi and now they're able to take down smash white dragon came with the numbers that ends up being enough they know yep, that they don't want to necessarily full commit just yet from invaders Why are they chasing? <laughs> There's no way they find the Ricky there. But yeah, very nice uh, play from them. And see Smile just showing on the wave. Feeling that he was safe because the Vengeful Spirit got his back. But that was a lot of heroes from White Dragons being there. Who? Really wanted to kill off Hiko here inside the smoke screen. So there's no escape for you, my friend. Nice little cold embrace. The delay proceedings a little bit, but oh, well, actually gonna be able to escape. Nice snowball away, and he's still alive. Winter's curse going out onto Smash, holding him in position. Hiko jumps back in with the Walrus Punch and dodges the God's Rebuke. Somehow this Tusk is just not dying. MNZ would love to keep this chase up. He wants to find the range for the Blink Strike. He does manage oh, to get on top of him. Vision. Does he have the damage? Oh, the dodge, getting away from the Trickster Trade, but eventually will end up getting brought down. MNZ falling a little bit low. FCR though. Getting caught out by both Smash as well as this Ricky. And Yadomi swapping back the Ricky, keeping MNZ alive. His FCR forced to cold embrace himself, but that just puts him in prime position to get Melstruck by the TA. Smash will find two heroes inside of the arena. Spear of Mars cancels out the TP from the Kunkka. Power Shot brings him low. The right click brings him even lower, and the Wave of Terror finishes him off. And Chris Luck easily brings down Yor. So uh, that fight, it looked like it might have been okay, you know, to keep Pico alive, some cool little outplays. But this time around, it's Invader's turn to bring the numbers and they get four kills in the process. It seemed that they were forcing too much with the Ricky Chase, but it worked well in the end. Smile was round. They keep killing. Oh, not done just yet. HFN. Shouldn't be any, any real HFN, dude. No, this cannot happen again. Oh, no. This cannot be happening him? twice. Ace is actually gonna somehow survive for now, but they're chasing what? him. They really want to kill him, but he's somehow alive. On the high Tiger. ground. Tiger. Okay. Tiger saved him from the bar shot. With the swap. Yeah, he did. Did indeed. Okay. You know, look. Yodomi and HFN used to play on the same team, right? So he's like, you know what, bro? You deserve another chance. It's fine, bro. I'll keep you alive for now. Let's make the game. I best. don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think so. Uh... FCR got lucky again, getting the Grove Bowl, but TA also got one. Fights are crazy. It's so surprising to me that invaders haven't been able to take the tier one tower in the top lane. White dragons even vacated this side of the map a long time ago. But most of the fighting has the, been happening towards mid lane, right? The morphling effect as well. He he is a hero. He's a hero that can hold the tower for a long time. Nice CR. I think they are gonna go Roche. This might be a good fight for White Dragons. I mean, you have the Winter Wyvern and the Konka. Oh. They just got the Konka Axe as well, so this could be huge. Does more have TP? Maybe it's there. Okay. 
Wonk is on the way. Roshan though is less than half HP, so they have to do Look something and do it now. If they wanna go in, smash. He breaks the initiation on the high ground, getting an arena onto two and keeping the heroes away from the Roshan, giving Chris Luck the opportunity to finish it off. Him and Yor will die for this. Or him and Yadomi, excuse me, will end up losing their lives, but hashtag worth, at least for now. Chris Luck throwing in the right clicks with him and the power shot from Slad and they end up killing off this Enchantress. Look how low Hiko is, forced to blink away. FCR finding himself 1v1 versus the Ricky. But at least he Can opened up space twice? for the rest of his team to surround and kill off the TA. The boat will smash onto Chris Luck's head. He gets off the refraction to kill off Hiko. But the right click from HFN and Mr. Jeans is enough to kill the TA. MNZ, Ooh. he's now trying to get himself out of trouble. He is... There's they no supports alive, so they don't have any detection. Does get himself away from the fight. Overall though here, Ace, if they end up going 3 for 3 and one of those kills is removing the Aegis that just got taken away and HFN gets to survive the whole fight, I feel like White Dragons will definitely take this. Of course, they are pretty happy. Denying the Aegis from the TA? Oh, the double spear. Uh, he doesn't have the Aghanim shot. Oh, he does have the Aghanim shot, but didn't get them towards the tree. Yodomi will end up dead here. HFN now unstoppable. MNZ though gets on top of the Morphling. So the damage mana. just gets to kill him. He has no mana. Oh, he gets speared to the tree by Smash. He is morphing though. They turn back onto Smash. The Arctic burn from FSR doing quite a bit of damage. And HFN able to get himself a double kill. We were talking about it earlier. They don't have much damage outside of the Morphling. But now Morphling feels happy to be involved. And it turns out they have a ton of damage if he is there. MNZ though. Time they do have that vision onto him. He is dusted up. They're chasing him with the snowball. MNZ should get caught and killed. Adaptive strike brings him low. The right clicks bring him down. And white dragons. All of us mm. and back in this game and feeling very good about themselves. Yeah, it, it looked like a freebie on the enchantress, but Yorin knew what he was doing. And I don't know. 1k ahead for white dragons. It definitely sounds like more than 1k now. So then you have this TA, doesn't have BKB, can't really fight against the Warrior Park. They need time now on Invaders, but this is not a draft that you're comfortable playing with with the like farming, AFK farming. You have a carry week. You have the TA mid. You really want to fight, but without the Aegis, I don't know if they can fight without the BKB on the TA anymore. Might actually try to take a fight right now from White Dragons as they're on the high ground. Hiko breaks the smoke. They're going on to Smash. Smash gets swapped oh, back to safety by Yodomi. Oh, the spear! It catches HFN and Hiko inside the arena. And both of them die in an instant. MNZ, he found the Conquer. Silenced them up. They're slowing him down. And they have completely surrounded him. The Pirate will die. Slotin gets the double kill. And Chris Luck is able to right-click down Yor as Smash found the spear onto him as well. Bro, all they right, went right. onto the Mars, but this Aghanim shot is doing so much work for Smash at the moment. That looked promising with us coming first, but <laughs> you gotta respect the Smash, right? He's a great player. He just landed the perfect spear. HFN just got exploded. The vent swap was nice as well. For me able to delay it long enough but they ended up winning that fight man that went so well yeah, they should and fight smash. on their terms for white dragons so uh, looking at the smorfling he is indeed going for that kanda earlier on he had queued up he queued up butterfly and i thought he, uh, he queued up an eagle song and i thought he might buy butterfly in this game which would feel pretty good, right? Ricky never wants to buy MKB in general. And the TA only buys MKB when she absolutely has to, but even then she doesn't enjoy it. So th that could have been a cool little option. Because it feels like for the next several fights, I'm not so sure damage is going to be the main issue for HFN. I think if, he's a, if he just doesn't die in the fight, he should be able to dish out enough damage over time. And uh, we're going to see him necessary for damage down bottom because they have found MNZ. And Hiko is carrying detection. They have learned from their errors. HFN gets off the adapter strike. He takes over the Ricky form. But allies are nearby to provide a target for the blink strike. And uh, HFN and the boys are going to disengage. Well, I say that, but Hiko blinks forward. 
I'm gonna find anything though, sadly. Trying to force more TPs there. Which I found might regret not going for the butterfly after the last fight on the triangle because they were starting to get kills, so the Kanda makes a lot of sense if you are playing ahead, but after the last fight, now TA will have the BKB soon. We'll be able to fight. Yeah, she has it already, so. Morph will now come back for BKB. I really thought he was going to go BKB first. Before, like, Kanda or anything else. But as long as he gets it, that's the important thing for this game. Speaking of big items, look what Ricky just picked up, dude. Disperser. Already available. He has Disperser Ags. I'm surprised it didn't go for an earlier shot, but this still feels very, very, very dangerous to play into. He's gonna be speedy. It's a lot of time for the next Roche, so they are probably going to fight again. My baiting. Okay. Good luck. He's away. Hiko has a, a little Ghost Scepter, so he's gonna be able to stay alive for now. They will throw in the pop. boat and force a BKB charge out of Chris Lux. This could be good for them, but MNZ is trying to find an angle on the back end of the fight. And they've now found Mr. Jeans. He doesn't have his BKB just yet. Smash found an arena on the two. They zone out the Kunka from here as well. There's going to be yet again another two hero spear that catches HFN and FSR. There's no Winter's Curse in this fight just yet as the Winter Wyvern is now dead. HFN, him against the world. Can he stand against everybody? He waits, right? Gets himself out of the waveform. Abandoning. The task right behind him as Hiko gets brought down by Yodomi. You're not going to be faring much better either. As Magic Missile catches him, Chris Luck right clicks him. And that it's a 4 Man. for nothing engagement. HFN TPs out. Will be able to get out just before the power shot lands. This but match has no remorse. Man. He keeps destroying them with his spears. Just destroying every fight. <laughs> Always a true hero spear, and HFN is always one of these. Honestly, I really thought that White Dragon were going to be favored in that fight. It's like, well, we baited a BKB charge out. Yeah. We have high ground. We have positioning near the tier two, but invaders literally just straight up outplayed them. Like you said, Smash with the two hero spear makes it all possible for them. I definitely felt like, okay, that should be like a swap save, not a BKB, but... You are only seeing the TA on your screen. You are not watching the Mars movements. Makes it easier for his mash. He has BKB now. Bro, I guarantee you of BKB. I guarantee you in that fight, HFN really wished he had a BKB instead of a condo. Yeah. They need the jam as well. Yep. MNZ breaks the smoke. They're actually gonna just jump headlong onto the Kunker, but that's gonna set them up. Here's a snowball save potentially, but Smash gets another two <laughs> heroes here, holding Kunker and FSR right at the edge of the wall. They bring down the Kunker, and Chris Luck with his BKB dishing out the necessary damage to take out the Winter Wyvern as well. MNZ though on the north side of the fight is gonna be a little bit isolated here, but his allies are streaming in. They're turning their attention back onto HFN, who's inside the smoke screen, so he cannot dish out the damage that he needs to. Smash will eventually die though. They create the necessary space. HFN escaping and leaving Hiko behind and saying, Saws mate, can't really do much for you here. I just need to get the hell out. Gonna delay dying and HFN, HFN is coming. No, don't do it. He's gonna kill the TA, sure. All right. Will he be able to survive this fight, though, is the question. He's going to try and TP out right now, and there's nothing to cancel it. Okay, never mind. Okay, HFN is okay. a god. My okay, bad, my okay. bad. I'm sorry. I wasn't familiar with your game, bro. That was actually he incredible. He really had to make that play. Imagine if Sismai was alive now. He really had to make that play. Sometimes you need to make this kind of play to win games as a carry. And whew, it, it's getting harder and harder for White Dragons to win a fight. I can't... It doesn't feel like Winter Wyvern is doing a lot on these fights as well. FCO just keeps dying like very early on in the engagement, right? So you may, were mentioning how Smash has had HFN's number, but a lot of these spears have been connecting onto him as well on this Wyvern. And then he gets smoke screened. And then what can you do as Wyvern? You don't have a BKB just yet, so you literally provide zero impact to the fight. 
they know the rush is alive but i don't think hfn has a tp so this is gonna be a team fight Okay, but it's oh, all good, bro. We... HFN is BKB now. He has BKB. Yeah, we'll have is... Agonins. Uh, Smash is in a bit of danger here. Winter's Curse holds him in position. They actually might be able to kill him. HFN is not that far away. He's on route. Smash inside the Roshan pit. And if he dies here, this could be them taking the road for White Dragon. Boat also going to crash down. Not going to catch oh, starting, Hemetis. however. But... Oh, boy, oh, might. Do they have the eye shot at the ready for Nico? They do, but they don't need them. HFN is here. It's a dominating streak. And this opens up the path for Roshan. They should be able to take this themselves. There's no buyback on the Mars. So it's a free Rosh. Okay, the game is turning all of a sudden, Is Yeah, sometimes you are the hero with the two hero spears every time. And then you just feed on the Rosh pit. And your team cannot fight anymore. That gives some space for White Dragons to breathe. At least... Morph is still very strong. The others, they need to catch up. Especially the Kunkka, he needs BKB. Winter needs one more item at least to be able to fight. He's struggling. He needs the BKB he's working on. Bottom tower is under attack. The game is starting to become problematic for invaders though, because one of the things about Morphling, you know, they're, they're these heroes like Morph, TB, sometimes Medusa where they actually provide all the damage you need in the game. So, provided things keep going in this direction, and now HFN will pick up this butterfly. Once he gets the butterfly, he is by far the strongest hero on the map. And as long as he's in a fight and they're not chain controlling him, invaders will be feeling like they're under pressure, they're on the back foot. They're gonna smoke up white dragons. They're gonna try and force this situation whilst having access to the sages. They didn't oh. ping exactly where they're at, but they have an idea. Enchanter has got Agonims. What's the plan here? Okay. Your Doom. Oh no! That was so smart. Your Domi was standing on the low ground with an illusion right above him. And uh, he was using his own body to break the smoke. They thought it was the illusion. We'll still end up dead though. And Smash! Smash didn't get out! He gets caught right here. He's dead. For sure. Double kill for HFN. That should be at least a tier 2 tower. They might not be able to get more kills. Should just like push. I have the gem on the tusk. That's nice. Why not on the Kunkka though? The Kunkka has eggs with BKB, Morphling. Not that far away from having a butterfly. Pretty much just needs the talisman of evasion because you can afford the claymore almost and after this tower you'll certainly be able to and we've gotten to that point you were mentioning earlier how they constantly want to be fighting from invaders uh how do they fight into the morphling at this stage of the game now i mean they only have to kill the morph but they have to kill the morph right the morphling <laughs> is all their, their damage at the moment so they might I, I don't know they should like it's a, it's hard to count on crazy good spears all the time so they need to buy like sight of ice they, they need to like try to survive the the first stage of the of the fight where morph just bursts two heroes try to get the back line try to kill the winter wyvern fast ricky is very strong they, they might be able to kill the morph not two times but at least once after BKB, they need to survive the BKB timing on Morph, that's for sure. That gets more difficult now because he just finished the Butterfly. It's about to be delivered very shortly. Butterfly, BKB, with Manta, kind of lads. Not an easy customer anymore on the yeah. Morphling. You need a set of eyes on, on Invaders. Looks like they're building two of them. One on Mars and one on the TA as well. Yeah, that's much needed, but if TA is buying Sight of Ice, who is getting the MKB? I don't think Ricky is a good MKB hero. He would be using the item much better. Oh. TA, TA, TA. He's soon gonna have the level 25, so you have the Melt Hit Bash at least to hold him in 
position even through BKB for a second or two. But yeah, you have it perfect. MKB is going to be very much required. And even TA doesn't enjoy buying MKB, right? It's a means to an end, sure. But when you buy MKB, but you don't have a, like a crit item yourself, there's no Daedalus or anything like this, then you don't feel that amazing about the damage output that you do with the MKB yeah. item. You can't like get Bloodthorn. It really doesn't want to get MKB. It's go time. So they gotta be careful on this high ground attempt. Let's see what they've got here. White dragons. They're thinking about it. They're pinging out these structures on the high ground. And this <laughs> is gonna XHFN. They're gonna do this nice, slowly, and cheesily. And dude, yeah. one expiration and that's half damage on the tier 3 tower. That's before even the Dark Troll Summoner is here with the rally. Go on. Smash. I'm gonna go in with the spear. Nope. But nope. Defense fine. Oh, they have the th Scythe of Vice on the TA, but still 1.2 minutes on the Aegis. They're gonna Why get you waiting. Here. Comes on the high ground, you'll Manta dodge the magic missile. And they're waiting, they're trying to bait white dragons to come up the hill first. How they know about the, the sight of ice? They should know. Look top, look top. Look what Ricky's doing. But He's force pushing this lane on the tier 3 tower. He's gonna force them to have to respond. They, they can just go there with one hero and next mark this spot. Looks like Ricky will blink first. He comes home. These heroes were smoked up. They were all missing off the map. Looks like they might be coming towards him. He doesn't have a Lincoln Sphere. He doesn't have a BKB. So, he'll cho choose the safer play. He does walk up and break the smoke. That was a very surprising move to make with the Kunkka still being in the game. Nonetheless, he'll be okay. He got lucky. Tusk was not close to him. He would instantly die if they jumped him there. Range was not ready. So they don't want to go again. Gold for my They're gonna face. wait for the Aegis to fire. And HFN has one more slot. Hmm. What do you think? Does he go MKB himself, knowing that there's a butterfly coming at some point for Ricky, or does he go Daedalus? I think MKB here against the smoke screen. Very important. Yeah, that's true as well. I have a fight potentially here. This is both teams waiting in the wings, waiting to see who reveals first. And Smash jumps up. He finds Mr. Jeans, forces out the early BKB, and has to BKB himself to escape the torrent combination. They will kill off the Yor Enchantress, but that yeah. did cost the BKB charge and the arena to make that happen. The invaders probably don't feel too bad, or too great about it, and White Dragon don't feel too bad about it. So they want more still. Sladen jumps forward. He finds FSR, gets him. With the shackle towards the tree, he's still alive for now, but will eventually die towards Mr. Jeans and the stolen shackle shot from HFN. MNZ goes in with the tricks of the trade. Look how low he's for him. Look how what? strong HFN is. Morphling, man. Able to burst him down with these counter hits and a massive adapter strike, forcing everybody else to retreat and a buyback from Sladen. That wasn't even HFN's needed. Why is he going for these skills? TA wasn't even there. And he knows that they have a jam. It's like I'm gonna surprise you, play. But who are you surprising without the Riki? They can always use the Snowball save. Winter Wyvern is there as well. They don't have BKB on the Mars. Just well. get out. And they chase. They were the ones that chose to chase, right? Because White Dragons were very happy to retreat from that. They're like, yeah, come back, boys. We thing. want to fight. I think he was like, hey, team, I got them. Wait, I'm alone. Never mind. Oh, Winter oh, Wyvern, no. the curse onto Chris Lock Smash. Not much you can do here. Your Domi at the very least does find the swap save. And they drop the arena behind them. But your Domi will die for this. Of course, at least, do survive. Getting themselves out of trouble. At the same time, 
Oh, White Dragon now just getting more and more gold for themselves. And are they thinking about going and chasing Slot in here? This would be huge if they find him because that would be a dieback on the Wind Ranger. Still alive for now, though, and they're thinking about what to do next. Honestly, with the gold Greek graph back to even, them getting so much experience on the side of White Dragon after all these kills. Personally, I feel like they are massively favored to win this game, the way things are going at the moment. Yeah, it, it's hard to find a way for invaders to win fights. They really need to find a good jump on HFN. They were doing that so well. But suddenly, they're just not playing as a team anymore, it feels like. It's probably one of those games where it was so easy for them to just run around getting individual cheap pickoffs for so long that they forgot what a hard, difficult fight's gonna look like. Then once the hard fight starts, it's like, oh well, damn. Our team is not really suited for situations where we have to take long, drawn out engagements rather than finding the immediate jump. I'm still not seeing oh, the impact of this Enchantress Agonems. Uh, even He's kind of rooting yes. the enemy and they're killing because of that? Two seconds root? It is one of those items where, especially at this stage of the game, where the enemy, enemy team is dying so quickly anyway, it's hot and they have, you know, very decent sources of disable between Kunkka, Winter Wyvern, Tusk. Not always easy to feel the impact of the sags here. So does that mean that all the allies get the attack speed bonus as well? Or only creeps and creatures? No, no, no. Only the... Yeah. Am I might be missing something here. Yeah. Two minutes to the Roshan. Is it like third Roshan, I think, right? Yes, Roshan number press. So, depending on which side it spawns, that means we get either this, the new Aegis or the new Aghanims as well as the Refresher Shroud on the other side. Uh, we'll see where they decide to take the Rosh. Big Man comes up. He should be respawning onto Radiant side when he returns. And we'll see if they want to try and go and pursue that. So what, that's also one thing, right? If you look at this uh, Invader's Draft, if TA is not right there in front of the Roche, their capacity to take it down is really, really lackluster. It is. TA at least got the Scythe of Eyes and can buy the MKB if she wants to, but that means she won't have buyback. It might be needed, though, if they go high ground. Difficult decision to have to be made. Speaking of items, Morphling is also going for a Hex next, opting against the MKB. Okay. MKB would be really, really nice. And nobody else on the team is buying it. But I suppose oh. he maybe feels that, you know, this Ricky doesn't have BKB, doesn't have Lincoln's Fear. Even if it's just a six second BKB, you can burst this Ricky down really, really fast if you Hex him or just kill him with the Kanda. You can quite easily. They know that Tusk TP bottom, so they are making this quick play top. But they'll have to get the Twin Gates to go bottom. They won't find anything here. And for White Dragons, they need to play for buybacks here as well. This, this game is not won. They need to save some buybacks. Roshan respawning in 19 seconds. Invaders will now realize exactly which side he's going to be on and that they are definitely out of luck. And this sucks right now. How do you get here in time, Ace? Because they know that mm. the Twin Gate will be covered and protected. Yeah, you just have to give up the Aegis. Maybe try to get a tier 3 tower and a lane of Rex in the top lane in exchange, but there's no other way to play this right now. Yeah, they can always try to fight top as well instead of going Roche. They can just wait. They can stop the Roche attempt as well, but that won't be needed because they gave up on the plan of pushing top. This is a good they know that Kunga can just hack someone to defend the tower or set up something. Roche 
Oof. All right. But it's practically impossible to kill HFN already. Now he has this Aegis and has the BKB for the second life. And all the invaders got out of this was a tier 2 tower in this mid lane. And a little bit of pressure top. But not enough to really justify the full maneuver that just ended up happening. I'm surprised that FCR doesn't, uh, I mean, Mr. Jeans doesn't have the shard yet on the Konka. That's a very good item to go high ground with. Yeah. That actually is quite surprising now that you mention it. Not, not for sure. He's lucky the with the uh, Tormentor shards. Maybe he'll get the gold necessary. He just picked up three bounty runes. That brings him a lot closer to the gold he needs. And now they're smoked up. I'm gonna try to find a fight somewhere. But the invaders are sitting very safely within their base for the most part. Not gonna provide an easy target. The only person outside of the base is the Wind Ranger up on top. But no, Chris Luck, he wanders to the low ground here. Hiko doesn't have an Aghanim Scepter. We cannot kick him back to the rest of the team. Chris Luck gets off his BKB. But in the meantime, HFN uses this distraction to take the tier three tower. Setting up for the melee racks here and the range racks. He gets swapped deeper into the base. Look at this. He gets hexed up. They almost burst him down. But he still has an Aegis. Snowball save will be there to buy space and time. But he's still okay. MNZ jumping in right now. Looking for FSR. Kills him off even through his own BKB. And he just bought a BKB of his own. So that makes it a lot easier for him to survive this fight. Smash has managed to keep alive here. The gets another park. spear. Throwing back the Morphling and the Tusk. And the Water Park from Mr. G ensuring that the rest of the invaders don't have an easy inroad into this fight. Uh, HFN, trying to right click through, gets the range racks. Now we'll finish off the melee as your ends up dead. Hiko, thrown back by Smash's Spear of Mars. He'll be the sacrifice here to secure the lane of racks. If he's the only one that dies in tandem with the Enchantress, they will take it. Two supports gone, but C Smile, he wants more. Does have Ooh, the wait. necessary cancellation. What, did he just cancel it himself? Did that? That was did not. That did not that hit, That was not right? a melt hit, guys. That did not hit, no. Um, okay. HFN will go now into the Wind Ranger form. Pops BKB, getting the Aegis back on himself. Swap back by your Domi. Trying to wait for him. Doesn't get to the low ground, Ace. And he dies. FSR finds the Winter's Curse, but it's a little bit too late. And unfortunately for him, MNZ will not die from this either. Chris Luck finishes him back. Off, gets himself a double kill. And that's a dieback on FSR. Oh, um, man, that was... <laughs> That was costly for them. What they just used happened? everything, and they only got the, the the set of racks, and like one buyback from from the Venge, right? That's all yeah. they got. They spent everything: cheese, Aegis, refresher shard. I'm not crazy. HFN cancel his own TP, right? I'm I think crazy. so. I think he thought, okay, he's gonna cancel, so I'm gonna do that first. Escape, but mm. only new. Ah, oh, well, that was not supposed to happen. White Dragon, life was looking so good for them. They'd only lost two supports for getting a lane of racks, but now all of a sudden, on the high ground, is invaders looking for a racks of their own. The water part from Kunkka will delay proceeding somewhat and smash. We need to save him with the swap, but the X marks pulls him back into a dangerous position. But unfortunately, their primary damage dealer, the Morphling, is still dead. So they cannot kill him off. MNZ now jumping into the tier 4 towers, bringing down Yor. And they take out the Tusk as well. Should buy. And this is that catch 22. He wants to buy back, but with only 10 seconds remaining, doesn't necessarily feel like it's worth it. They need to buy oh another jam goodness. as well. He doesn't have. He does have the gold for buyback in the jam. But it, it's not. Oh, he had to buy. They want more. Oh. They drop the smoke screen. To make it easier to take the tier 3 tower and dissuade White Dragon from jumping in. Chris Luck sitting and just right clicking onto the racks. Him and MNZ should be able to make short work of this. And that's two lanes of racks suddenly that they've been able to claim here. And they just get out, they retreat. White Dragons will not be able to catch them on the get out. It's 17k ahead now. <laughs> they still have the tier 2 bottom, so no, no need to commit on that tower defense on top. It's not okay, but you might lose the game if you try it, so. 
Bro, look at this graph. Look at that that very sharp uptick. In gold, net worth, and win probability. You can literally see where that, the game-changing fight just happened. It only takes one mistake to lose against the Templar. And they have another set of eyes on Mars now. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is going to be difficult. And throughout that fight, all the gold they picked up gave allowance for the Ricky to finish off his butterfly. So now he has butterfly BKB. They do not have a single MKB on the other side. They don't have a Bloodthorn on White Dragon either. So this Ricky, who was starting to feel like a little bit squishy, has gotten all of his tank ability back. They smoked up. Invaders, they want to go for the game-winning fight. It might happen here by the Dire Secret Shop. They do manage to get the magic missile out. Yours in trouble. He gets hexed, but the Cold Embrace will keep him alive. Look at that jump, though. As HFN with his BKB kills off the Vengeful Spirit, that's a dieback from her. FCR jumps forward with... Uh, we're looking for a potential Winter's Curse, doesn't find anybody just yet. And they end up losing your right now, Sladen, in front of HFN and Hiko. They should be able to kill off this Wind Ranger. No way she runs herself to safety. And White Dragons utilize their high ground advantage to take a favorable fight. Invaders flying a little bit too close to the sun on that one. They find themselves on the back foot and they have to retreat from the White Dragons. Yeah, but I, I'm getting a feeling they're going to get ahead of themselves and try to go again. Oof. They need to push out the waves. Look at top, look at mid. Death's bounty. Love how Hiko has the double gem because he has two eyes. Uh... Just got his gem back from the bench kill. I mean, because they killed Venge and they know it's a dieback, at least for 30 seconds they'll be playing 5v4. But unfortunately, Enchantress does not like she has TP boots or anything. But I think you're right. They should just wait, take it easy, be patient, push out these waves, and fight for the next ages. Because if you go now and then you end up losing the fight, you could just lose the game instantly. Yeah. You, you might have to, like, use the Enchantress creeps to hold one wave. She has the... The power to do that now to get a lot of creeps but he's not getting any creeps they really need to fix the waves every time because ricky is doing a good job on the split push i have to be careful there are some gems here available honestly it's only the fear of what's been happening elsewhere on the map why he got away with what he just did but they have vision they could have actually killed him cancel out his tp but we're at that stage of the game where nobody's taking any unnecessary risks. They might wait for the next rush. One minute and a half. And it's gonna be bottom again. Get ready for the next one. Ultron is coming. Okay, so HFN went for Disperser instead of MKB or Hex. But that does mean that he is now maxed out. Disperser, BKB, Lincolns, Manta, Butterfly, Kanda already having sold boots. The only advancement for him to get is Shard. I mean, Shard could still be useful. Moon Shard and then like eating in Agonims, but besides that, you're done. Yeah, he did not get the MKB, so that's annoying. But he had to buy the Lincolns. He felt like better to stay alive. So now it's invaders getting the chance of arriving first at the Roche pit. Man's up in 15 seconds. This lock nearby position ready to dish out the damage. It's going to be obvious. They got to push out the wave before going Roche though. Invaders know what's up, know where they're coming from. HFN and Konka are in through mid lane. Walken. Konka TP'd. HFN wants to use the Manta again, I think. It goes too fast. Oh, I think they don't have oh. TP. Went too fast. It went too fast, it's already dead. Also, Did I just realized... You... Oh, sl slide it, slide it. He just went headlong. 
Goes to the Kunker, gets dragged back in by the X, but Smash finds the arena onto four heroes. There will be a Winter's Curse. Might threaten the life of this Wind Ranger, but not just yet. Smash gets swapped back by Adomi to keep him alive. FSR, FCR rather, gets killed off by Chris Luck, who now hexes up Mr. Jeans. They really want this Kunker, but HFN really wants to dish out the damage on the back end of the fight. Kunker will now die as they find a Spear of Mars, pushing back HFN. He gets lucky enough to get pushed into the wave. And he can get himself out to safety. Yor will not be so lucky though as Chris Lux finishes him off with a huge Mel Strike. It'll be triple kill for the TA. And Age is still in tandem on her. And it looks like they might be going for another lane of racks to make it megas because two of these heroes, two of the cores, do not have buyback ace. This might be game to be honest. They're lacking focus on White Dragons. They're just killing the Vengeful Spirit the last fights. They're not coordinating to get important kills. Swap back. Yadomi finding a swap onto Yor. This is going to be a dieback potentially onto this Enchantress. They do manage to at the very least kill off Yadomi. HFN does a ton of damage, but now HFN has been hexed up. He needs to run away. He's inside the smoke cloud. He doesn't have a BKB anymore. And Smash catches him inside the arena and kills him off. Both him and Hiko forced to buy back as they need to mount a final defense of their base. Pele, Rax gonna be under siege. Mega creeps are on the cards. And Slotin, they've gone outside the base to find your. They have the Enchantress in their sights. They have the Enchantress killed off. And that's a dieback on the edge. They steal the Tormentor for good measure. In the meantime, though, MNZ inside the base to kill off Hiko all by his lonesome. Grabbing the dieback onto him. HFN does BKB. Able to right click down and kill off this rig. FCR at least finds the Winter's Curse, but Yodomi kills him nonetheless. HFN, what can he do by himself? Can he carry this game all on his lonesome? Looks like the oh, answer no. is no. It's the Spear of Mars catches him onto the wall. Chris Luck almost kills him off. He's alive for now, though. Mr. Jeans throws in the Kunkka boat. That'll provide Coco Rum and keep HFN alive for now. MNC did manage to finish off the full pack, so they do have the Megas. Chris Luck. Not sure he survives this fight though. Yes, he might! It's here! Because the spear from Smash still showing no mercy. Catches HFN, puts him in the wall. He's down in the grave for two minutes. And even though they find the kill onto the TA, it's not gonna be good enough. GG is called. The game is won. White Dragons are eliminated and invaders continue the journey in the close qualifiers for South America. The dream for Dream League stays alive, Ace, and they can still make it to the big tournament. Uh, that was a long, long one with this Templar Assassin draft. That looked scary. As soon as Morph started to...